What if you had animal ears? Written by Sandra Markle, illustrated by Howard McWilliam, with permission to read out loud by Scholastic. What if you had animal ears? What if one day when you woke up, the ears on your head weren't yours? What if overnight a an wild animal's ears took their place? A jackrabbit. A jackrabbit's ears are extra long and full of blood vessels. They are perfect for giving off body heat so the jackrabbit stays hot or stays cool on hot days. Fact, jackrabbit's big ears are super sound scoops, so it can hear sneaky predators like coyotes or fox or like coyotes or foxes in the time in time to hop away fast. You must be this tall to ride. If you had jackrabbit ears, you'd look taller, so you could ride a roller coasters or ride roller coasters sooner. Tasmanian Devil. A Tasmanian Devil's normally pink or pale pink ears blush red when it's excited or upset, like when it's fighting other devils for food, or when a predator like an owl flies close. Fact. A Tasmanian devil's keen hearing can detect sounds as much as half a mile away. If you had Tasmanian devil ears, you'd never miss a secret, but your ears would always give away if what you heard upset you. The Eastern re or Eurasian red squirrel. A Eurasian, a Eurasian red squirrel's ears change with the seasons. Its ear tufts, like its fur coat, grows thicker and longer just in time for cold winter weather. Fact, Eurasian red squirrels are born naked. They don't get their first full coat and ear tufts until they are about 21 days old. If you had Eurasian red squirrel ears, you could play in the snow without earmuffs or a hat and still have toasty warm ears. Koala. A koala's big round ears are completely covered with fuzzy oily hair. This protects them from hot sunshine and chilly winds. Plus raindrops run off so fast that their ears stay dry on the inside. <clears throat> Scientists discovered that female koalas cho choose the loudest male in the area when they mate and have babies. For koalas, being loud usually means they are strong and healthy. If you had koala ears, you could style your ear hair. Then you'd be turn or be sure to turn heads and start a wild trend. Nokapi. Nokapi's big ears move separately, perfect for listening to two in two different directions at once. So while dining on leaves in the forest, Nokapi listens in every direction for predators like leopards. Nokapi's tongue is so long that it is able to lick its ears clean inside and out. If you had okapi ears, you could easily listen in two directions at once, so no one would ever be able to sneak up and surprise you. Townsend's Big-Eared Bat. A Townsend's Big-Eared Bat Ears make tiny sounds louder. This way they can hear flying moths and mosquitoes even when they can't see them, which helps with night hunting. Once close, this bat can uses its wings and tail to sweep the insects out of the air and into its mouth. Fact, while flying, a Townsend's big-eared bat makes high-pitched noises and listens for echoes. That is how it senses buildings and trees and to avoid crashes. If you had a Townsend big-eared bat ears, you'd never need insect repellent. You'd hear mosquitoes in time to catch them or swat them away. <coughs> African elephant. An African elephant has the world's biggest ears. Each ear has big has each ear is as big as six feet long and four feet wide. Besides giving off body heat, they flap so elephants can create their own cool breeze. 
fact. African elephants make and hear very deep rumbles. These sounds are below what human ears can hear, but an elephant can hear another elephant more than two miles away. If you had elephant ears, you'd never need a windy day to launch a kite. You could just flap your ears. A great horned owl. A great horned owl's outer ears are just holes surrounded by feathers. The right opening is slightly larger or slightly higher than the left. That little difference is enough for sounds to reach one ear first. And that lets the owl home in on fast food like mice and rabbits. Fact. What do what look like ears are just tufts of feathers but may may silently show feelings. Lowered when upset and raised when checking something out. Marco, Polo. If you had great horned owl ears, you could quickly pinpoint sounds so you'd be the star at playing Marco Polo. Philippine tarsier. A Philippine tarsier's ears are high pitch or ears hear high pitched sounds ones way too high for humans and most other animals and they can make super high pitched squeaks too just like code tarsiers use the, these sounds to talk to each other without attracting hunters like owls the philippine tarsiers paper thin ears are nearly always moving they are searching for sounds that will let them find insect meals like termites and crickets if you had a Philippine Tarsier's ears, you'd be able to listen to high-pitched music played as loud as you liked, and no one else would ever, ever even notice. A serval. A serval's ears have spot-like markings on the back. These let serval kittens easily track and follow their mother through tall grass. And king hearing is, uh, lets the serval know just where to pounce to catch a mouse. Fact. A serval's inner ear lets it stay balanced to land on its feet, even when it leaps as high as a standard basketball hoop to slap a bird onto the ground. If you had serval ears, you would be so you would be so easy to spot. You'd lead every class trip, and even if you jumped high enough to peek over a wall, you'd always land on your feet. Meerkat. A meerkat's ears have muscles to seal the opening shut. That's great for keeping their ears clean while digging up food like beetles, grubs, or mole rats. Fact. Meerkats bark different alarm calls for predators on the ground and in the air. Hearing the ground alarm sends meerkats running. The other makes them freeze, so they're just harder to spot from above. If you had meerkat ears, your ears would always stay clean, even when you played in the mud. Wild animal ears could be fun for a while, but you don't need your ears to cool off or stir up a breeze, and you never use your ears to find your dinner or stand out in a crowd. So if you could keep a wild, wild animal's ears for just more than a day, what kind would be right for you? Luckily, you don't have to choose. Your ears will always be people ears. They will be what you need to hear music playing, birds chirping, and people talking. Plus, they'll be just what you need to hold back your hair or prop up your glasses. What's so special about your ears? Your ears work with your brain to help you hear. Your outer ears, ears catch sounds. Sounds are really waves of moving air. Once inside your ear, the air bumps into the eardrum. Each bump pushes three tiny bones in the middle ear that, and that, pass, that push pass, passes to, to the fluid-filled part of the inner ear, making tiny, -like, tiny hair-like cells move. These cells send signals to the brain. Almost at, one, almost at once, the brain checks out the signals and you hear a sound. Your ears also work with your brain to give you a sense of balance. Your inner ear has fluid-filled loops, 
Move your head and the fluid inside the loop sloshes. Then the liquid stops against the cells that send signals to your brain. Almost at once, the brain checks out those signals and you sense your body is moving. If you stop super quick, the liquid might keep sloshing and you feel like you're still moving. Keep your ears healthy. Your ears need special care. And here are some tips for taking care of your ears. Don't play music, movies, or games very loud. Wear something to guard your hearing in really noisy places like motorsports events. Wear a helmet anytime you could hit your head, like when you're riding your bike, rollerblading, or, skate, or skiing. Never poke anything into your ears. Only a doctor should treat an ear problem. The end. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the David Trailer Zoo. We just got done reading a really cool book called What If You Had Animal Ears? So I thought I'd bring along one of my favorite ambassador animals that I think has really cool ears. This is our five-year-old domestic polecat, um, also known as a ferret. So these guys are, they are household pets. Um, they're known for their long, slinky bodies. They can weigh up to, they can grow to be about 20 inches long. Um, you'll see her tail there and be about four, four pounds or so. Um, they are related to the black-footed ferret. And just like the black-footed ferret, these guys do not have great eyesight. So what they don't have in eyesight, they make up for in their sense of smell and their hearing. Okay? So they have very good hearing. You can see her ears right here. She has an outer ear and that's gonna help direct the noise back to her, into her inner ear. And then she has a really good sense of smell, so she'll be able to see what are, you know, what she's smelling, which is great. They also have some pretty sensitive feet pads. Back to their hearing and their um, nose real quick, it is actually better than our hearing or our sense of smell and also dogs, so that's pretty cool. These guys are more active at night than they are during the day. Um, they will sleep a lot. They sleep about 18 hours out of the day, but when they're awake, they love to play um, and be out and social. They're a very social animal. So, like I said, she is one of our ambassador animals, so hopefully you'll be seeing her out on trips soon to visit everybody. Um, but thanks again for stopping in and reading the book with us and learning a fun fact about one of my favorite ambassador animals. Until then, we'll see you next time.